So in today's video, I just wanted to talk to you about all the dumb shit I bought in my 20s. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Christina and I used to be a full-blown shopaholic. I was also in $120,000 of student loan debt that I never felt like I could get out from underneath of because of a lot of bad money habits that I had. Now I am completely debt free. I've really changed the toxic relationship I used to have with shopping and with stuff. So if you wanna see more videos like that, I have a ton on my channel, please subscribe and stick around. But in today's video, I just wanna kind of stroll down memory lane and basically just roast some of the stupid I bought and did back in my 20s. I will also acknowledge that I was and am a very privileged person. I didn't have a lot of financial insecurity in my life. And even the job I had that got me into this debt was still a high earning job. But I basically chose to impulse buy my way through that salary. And truly I was one of those classic high earners who was broke. But I just wanna say upfront, I was very fortunate to have that even be a problem. But things like overconsumption and having low self image and trying to buy your way to happiness is a true problem that many of us face and count me in as another person having that issue. But I hope with this video, you can see sort of the mess that I was in, some of the mindset that I was in, and ideally learn from the mistakes I made, especially if you're in a similar situation. So let's get into it. The first stupid thing I used to spend my money on all the time were clothing hauls, specifically fast fashion clothing hauls. I used to be a diehard Zara, H&M, Forever 21 girl, especially in my 20s. Like, I mean, me in 2013, I was a huge fan and had to have a pair of jeans in every color. But let's remind ourselves that one, I was a full-time student, so I was basically living off of my loans. I did earn money by doing student placements and co-ops throughout my years in pharmacy school, and I had jobs all through my undergrad and university, but I could never hold on to any dollar that I made. As soon as money came in, I would spend it right away, and my favorite place to spend it, bar none, is on clothing. I loved keeping up with the latest trends. I loved going to the mall to spend time, to walk around. It was like my favorite, you know, sunny weekend afternoon activity, and more was always more when it came to these things. So that's when I was a student in my 20s. And then by the time I actually started working, I started upgrading the stores that I shopped at to places like Aritzia. And I kind of doubled down on my shopping. So not only was I really indulging in a consumerist culture and really valued getting more things for less money, I regularly emptied my bank accounts and my wallet and filled up my closets and my drawers with stuff that I couldn't even tell you where it is to this day. And I remember specifically when I first started working as a pharmacist and started making my very first pharmacist paycheck, I drove down to the mall, spent $500 at Aritzia. I don't think I have any of those pieces anymore, by the way. And then I backed into a pole and scratched my car and was so stressed and overwhelmed because I didn't have any way to fix or pay for the damage that I did to my car because I went to the mall to go shopping. One may not have so much to do with the other, but I just remember that money stress that I felt of how am I gonna fix this? My parents are gonna be so mad at me, all this kind of stuff. And it was one of my earlier memories of being stressed about money when I started working as a result of my shopping behaviors. Sephora sales. I came of age in peak beauty guru YouTube era. Desi Perkins, Manny MUA, Patrick Starr, Jeffree Star, Tati. I watched them all. I know all about drama getting, beauty getting, whatever, all of those things. And when I wasn't shopping for clothes, I was probably shopping for skincare and makeup. I hadn't even heard of Sephora until I hit my mid late 20s. And the first time I walked into a Sephora, it was one of the most overwhelming experiences of my life. I didn't know that there were so many makeup products and options and brands to choose from. My only access and exposure to the beauty world was through the drugstore. And then when I started watching beauty gurus and then started learning about places like Sephora, all of a sudden my $2 blush from CoverGirl was no longer good enough. And I felt this pressure to start upgrading. The other thing I also really started feeling was this level of connection to a lot of the beauty gurus that I followed and admired. I've said this in many videos before, but it felt really special to me to be able to access a NARS highlighter that my favorites like Desi Perkins were using. So the Sephora sales, I would take full advantage of 
to try out all the really expensive things that I had my eye on or that I thought was too pricey to buy at full price. And that kind of spending at Sephora was starting to become normal for me. It was normal to spend four, five hundred, six hundred dollars on a makeup haul just to let all that stuff expire and give me probably the worst acne I've ever had. So lusting after having a huge makeup collection, you know, those beauty guru rooms with the Ikea Alex drawers full of makeup, it's all gonna go bad. It is absolutely impossible to go through. And I wasted a ton of money doing those Sephora hauls. Number three was booking trips using my student loan to pay for it. This would have been in my final years of pharmacy school. I think we booked a class trip to Mexico and I didn't want to be a wet blanket and miss out on it. But my mentality in taking this trip was, uh, what's another one to two grand on $120,000 of debt anyway? And so YOLO, I went. And my attitude and the narrative I had in my head at the time was that, ah, oh, I'm gonna start making so much money in my career. I'll pay off my loans super easy, no problem. So as you'll see with a lot of the spending in this video, I acted like I would pay it off easy with no problem, except that I didn't have a plan and it just caused me to rack up even more debt that would take that much more time, energy, and sacrifice to be able to get out of. Next dumbest purchase for me was this Saint Laurent smoking moto jacket. It's beautiful, it's cool. I think I was about maybe $85,000, $90,000 in debt when I decided to buy this jacket. Somehow it came across my radar and I just got obsessed. And I remember feeling really overwhelmed and anxious and like telling myself that I shouldn't be doing this and that I sort of knew better when I went to go meet the girl to buy the jacket, but like, I did it anyway. So there was something in me when I made these purchases that sort of pushed logic aside and kind of just did what I wanted. And it took me a lot of purchases like this to figure out that I wasn't gonna be making any progress on any of the goals that I had for myself. I wanted to do things like travel, I wanted to eventually buy a condo, I would need to buy a new car, even having an emergency fund. I wasn't putting any money towards these things or even recognizing the importance of them because I favored buying into my current obsessions of the moment. And the problem was as my 20s went on until I started my debt-free journey in 2019, the things just kept getting more and more expensive and I kept inflating my lifestyle further and further as I went along in my career and in my 20s. If I didn't make a change, it wasn't gonna get any better. Drunken treating everybody. You know what, drunk Christina was a fun Christina. I was also really generous when I was wasted. <laughs> I remember having many nights at the bar or the pub with my friends and waving around my credit card, treating everybody to drinks, treating them to food after the bar, um, buying rounds, things like that, thinking that I was just being really nice and generous. And I think that's an amazing thing to be, like treating friends and giving to others in any way you can is an amazing feeling. It's actually scientifically shown to make us happier. But one, I was wasted. And two, not only did I wake up with a hangover the next day, but I woke up with a credit card hangover, probably even worse. Because again, I wasn't budgeting. None of this money was accounted for. The trip to the bar to begin with was probably something just as equally impulsive and YOLO-y. So on top of all the other spending I was doing on clothes, shopping, skincare, Sephora, I was also overspending on myself going out. And then there was more money that was never planned for that I had to figure out how to pay for after the fact. I'm more than happy to treat my friends and others to dinner, even if it's not initially in my budget nowadays. But at least now I'm budgeting and I know where that money is gonna come from and I can rebalance that budget so I can actually pay for it. It. In my 20s, I was never really in a lot of credit card debt. I always found a way to pay that credit card off, but I never had anything left after payday. And it would just be another contributing factor to this consistent paycheck to paycheck lifestyle that I was living. And I have since then stopped drinking and that saves even more money in my pocket. Number six was entire skincare or makeup lines. Not only was I a huge fan of shopping at Sephora, but I also had this thing where I wanted to be like a brand purist. I made it my mission to buy every single item in that skincare line, thinking that it would make my skin better. And if I used all the products in the same brand or same line, that my results would be just that much more pronounced. And again, it just gave me skin like this. 
And so if one whole skincare line didn't work, then I thought, okay, let's switch to another one. And on and on it went with more and more wasted money. Nowadays, my skincare is almost entirely from the drugstore and it's simplified down to around three to four items plus a prescription medication that I got from a dermatologist and my skin has never been better. So go figure. And they're all from different brands too. And finally, one of the dumbest purchases I made in my 20s. It's a little bit embarrassing, but what can I say? I have a Lyric tattooed on my body. I also came from the, year, from the era of getting Lyric and quote tattoos um, and that was a U2 fan subscription. Yeah, I'm a big fan of U2. I do heart Bono and I remember in my 20s paying like $25 a month to be part of the U2 fan club. I don't even remember the perks that you would even get. I think I got like a, I don't even know. I think I got like a picture book from like the Vertigo tour. I don't even know where it is. And I was basically paying more than maybe what Netflix would cost today. Um, to get like early access to YouTube shows or book launches, things like that, that I never really indulged in. Except for the concerts, I, I went to pretty much all that I could. But uh, yeah, and if you wanna know, the lyric is from the song Running to Stand Still. That's probably another dumb purchase in my 20s is getting all the tattoos that I have, except for one and my Chica tattoo. The rest of them, I really could do without it and kind of cringe at today, so. So those are some of the worst purchases and worst money and shopping mistakes I made when I was a full-blown shopaholic in my 20s. Of course, your 20s are the time that you take to get to know yourself, to make mistakes and to learn from them. But I hope if you're in your 20s now and watching this, just don't make them as expensive as I did. It's not worth it and it's gonna take a lot of time to clean that mess up. Take it from me, I'm 36 now, it's a whole thing. Let me know some of the worst purchases that you made in your 20s. Did they make you cringe or are you happy that you made them? If you got some value from this video at any point, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It is the best way you can help support my channel and help it reach other people. And if you like this video and wanna see more like it, please subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys, see you in the next one. Bye.